All right, hello and welcome. Today we'll be doing the iPod Classic 4th Gen Ultimate Repair Guide. Um, yeah, so this this is an extremely repairable iPod model. Probably one of the best iPod models to upgrade or repair, I reckon. It's all big parts, it's all very easy to come apart. There's not much you can break. They're pretty durable. You can put massive um, SSDs in them and pretty decent batteries as well. So yeah, if you're looking for a good iPod to use every day, in 2022 this is definitely a good one to look at so yeah just let's get started so to open it up you just get your box cutter knife slide down the side there it's usually easier towards the middle and just pry up there's just plastic clips holding it all holding it all together so yeah nothing too difficult just work your right way around And yeah, the whole thing comes apart. Don't like rip it apart straight away because you've got that um, lock switch cable and headphone jack cable at the top there. That's probably the most fragile part of the entire iPod, so just be careful with that. I have in the past managed to rip that connector straight off the uh, flex cable there. And I think I've seen some other ones that have had the uh, connector on the logic board side ripped off as well. And it's, yeah, so just be careful because if you rip the traces off, that can be a nightmare to repair. And yeah, you'll see that old mechanical hard drive sitting in there. Just take that out. You don't need that. That's old technology now. Yeah. I think it's like an IDE hard drive. Mini IDE. And yeah so it would yeah in order to replace that battery as you can see that wire runs straight under the logic board so we're gonna have to remove the logic board first and you will need um, I can't remember what specific size it is but it is a Torx screw and there are just six screws on the logic board there so just grab out your bit uh, yeah you can see I'm test fitting which one it is but yeah, if you don't have one of those um, screwdriver kits, you can get them off eBay for like 10 bucks with all the different bits. I'd recommend getting one of those if you open up a lot of these electronics. You probably want to get a parts tray or a parts mat as well maybe. So they don't fall, roll around anywhere. But yeah, all six of these screws are the exact same size. So you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up or anything like that. And they are pretty big, so you're not going to strip them or anything. <laughs> yeah, and the sixth one's just hiding under that um, tape there, that black tape. So just remove that carefully. Try not to rip up that ribbon cable, because you could accidentally pull it out and damage that connector. And there's your final one. Yeah, and you probably want to unplug the uh, battery as well before you try lifting up the logic board. There you go. Now, there are still two things attached. There's the flex cable for the screen and the flex cable for the buttons. So you just lift the logic board up sideways, just like that. Yeah, and we can take out the buttons just by lifting up the uh, latch and pulling them back pulling back that flex cable yeah just be careful if you're going to use the tweezers on the flex cables because they are a bit flat fragile and that screen is just sitting in there so it should fall out with the logic board yeah and just put that off to the side and yeah so that battery is glued in sort of thing So yeah, um, you can just get, yeah, what's it called, the Isesimo, the, 
the metal pry thing and just pry that up like that comes out pretty easily but yeah just be careful there are yeah there is the components for the buttons underneath and that flex cable just be careful of all that yeah and I'm pretty sure if you have faulty buttons you can re just replace that whole assembly there but um yeah the buttons rarely fail on these ones because they actually used real proper buttons on the old classics so yeah they work well and they rarely fail and yeah I like to just at this point I like to just reassemble it and not worry about putting the new battery with the cable running underneath the logic board when I when I put the new batteries in I just put the cable above just so it's way easier to replace in the future so yeah just putting it all back together yeah I don't, I don't know why they decided to put that cable underneath maybe it was a clearance issue with the original hard drive or something or I don't know it just it seems like a bunch of unnecessary work to have to undo the whole thing just to get it a to get at the battery which otherwise would just be removable so yeah just putting all those six screws back in Alright. Yep, now for the battery. Of the yeah, so with the iPod fourth gen, I usually just use a third gen battery because they're basically the same size and they use the same connector. So I just buy third gen batteries in bulk and use them in both the third and the fourth gen. Because they fit in both. Whereas the fourth gen battery will only fit in a fourth gen, so yeah yeah and they're basically the exact same size in terms of milliamp hours as well i think the third gen might even be a bit bigger by like 50 milliamp hours or something so you're getting a slightly bigger battery and basically the same form factor and yeah as you can see it just fits in properly just like that yeah they're, they're the exact same technology and everything so And yeah, now for the hard drive, we can use a um, one of these IDE to um, CF card adapters. These are yeah, these are always what I use. It's probably the way to go. They're by far the cheapest option. You can get them from China for like two bucks, or from Australia for like fifteen. I sell these for like fifteen on eBay, but you can get them even cheaper on AliExpress shipped from China and they work perfectly I never really had any issues with these maybe a faulty one here and there but you know who cares just get another one so yeah what I do is I like to push down those pins the master slave jumper because sometimes that can push up against the housing and cause a short and I also like to cut down these two little pins at the bottom here because Again, those can short on components on the actual logic board itself as well. So what I do is I just snip them back with the pliers. And then I also like to shave them down flush with the, um, you know, whatever this thing's called. Yeah, the thing for sh sanding down sharp edges. Can't remember what it's called at the moment, but it does the job could use some sandpaper as well I guess but yeah whatever just make sure you get all that um yeah just make sure you wipe away all of those little scrapings because you don't want to cause any shorts with those and make sure the blobs aren't touching each other you can use a cotton bud and some alcohol it's probably a good idea 
Yeah, here we go. Oh, yep. And I like to put a layer of Captain Tape around this as well. Just to make sure that those the, those little pins aren't touching anything on the logic board. Because, yeah, I have had issues with that before. So, yeah. Just copy what I do here. Yeah, and so for the hard drive, you can either use just a straight up compact flash card or you could use a uh, micro SD adapter, whatever works, whatever's cheaper. Similar, yeah, same sort of hard drives to the iPod minis. That's an example of a dual CF card adapter. Although, as I said in the mini video, I did get a batch of that, ex that specific type that just didn't work with iPods. So maybe stay away from that specific brand. But yeah, yeah, just go with whatever's cheaper or w with whatever, whatever you prefer, whatever has the better storage capacity for you if you are after a high storage one like a 128 or 256 i'd go with the micro sd cards because um it's pretty hard to find a uh, 128 or 256 gig um compact flash card whereas with the sd cards it'll be much cheaper and much easier to do much easier to find so yeah before you install it you have to cut back that plastic bit there as well otherwise there'll be clearance problems yep it's just there for the uh, old IDE hard drive so you don't insert it the wrong way. But yeah, since we're not using that anymore, just snip that off. Doesn't have to be too flush. And yeah, lining up the pins with the adapter and just putting it in simply like this. And there we go. Now if you, you could just seal it up right now how it is, but yeah, that'll, that whole um, hard drive assembly there will rattle around quite a bit. So what I like to do is just grab some packaging foam and taping that underneath. Just hold it all in place there. And yeah, just sticking that down with some um, double-sided tape. Some people like to use the iFlash adapters, but for anything that's not a 6th or 7th gen, I reckon it's pointless because they're just so much more expensive that is it worth it? I don't know. That's up for you to decide. I think people like them because they, they might save more power or something. I don't know. I've never actually tested it, so I don't know. I've only used iFlashes on the 6th and 7th gens, and that's just because the other adapters weren't... Yeah, that. I was having compatibility issues with the other adapters, the AliExpress ones, so... Yeah, but I've never had any issues with the, uh, with the cheaper adapters on uh, the 3rd or 4th gens. So I'll just go with those, because they are, we're talking like 5 bucks compared to 50 so you, yeah, you're way better off going with one of these. Yeah, and as you can see, I had a bit of a dent on the back of this one. So, yeah, to get that out, you can just push from the other side. I don't get it fully out, but I think it looks a lot better than what it did. Yeah, and this back, other than that dent, the back was in pretty good condition on this one. Like in terms of scratches and stuff, it was... A lot less scratched up than what is than what is usual for an iPod of this age. Yeah, so these iPods are coming on like what 17, 18 years old now, something like that. So yeah, if they still have the original battery, it'll probably definitely be time for an upgrade. And now just turning it on, and you should see that file logo. So just plug that straight into your computer. And restore with iTunes. And now do all your tests, click all the buttons, put some music on it, see if it plays. Should be all good. Make sure you got the right storage capacity there. And yeah, now for the final step, just giving the whole thing a wipe down. 
So yeah, as you can see, this is a pretty easy upgrade for this model. There's not much to it. Don't there's not that there's not even that many screws. There's no soldering required. Nothing like that. It's just an adapter and battery and some SD cards, and there you go. Good as new. Yeah, so if you're having like headphone jack issues, for instance, that um, headphone jack PCB there at the top is fully replaceable. So you can just get another one of those online or poached from another dead iPod. But um, yeah, if that hasn't worked, it'll be like a logic board issue, which at that stage, I don't know. It's probably unfixable. Probably, unless if you have actual troubleshooting skills and stuff, but it's probably not worth it. You're probably just better off buying another one at that stage. So yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, that's about it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a give it a like, maybe subscribe. Yeah, so if you want to buy one of these, you can check out my eBay store. I sometimes have them available, but these this model is becoming less and less common because it is a pretty sought after model and it's quite old now at this point. So yeah, if you do want one, I'd get one now because who knows, in a couple of years, it might be pretty hard to come by. They might be pretty expensive as well. So yeah, um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully see you next time. Bye.